This video is going to show you how to get started with um, setting up button designs for production. So to get started, I've got an eight and a half by 11 artboard. I can double check in my artboard panel over here and double click it here to make sure it's eight and a half by 11 and portrait works best for buttons. You can also make sure that you want to be in the inches. So if I just click anywhere, I don't have anything selected. I just kind of click in my arts artboard or in my workspace. This properties panel will show me if I'm in inches. So if you're in points or pixels, your life will be much easier if you go over here to inches. I'm going to put my rulers on by, by clicking command R to get rulers. And I'm going to click inside this dark area and pull down to drop a fourth inch border on all sides. So I do that by clicking inside the ruler, dragging my mouse, and I'm going to make a quarter inch border to make sure I'm not too close to the edge and it's not going to get cut off when I print. And then we can start doing our layout. So there's three sizes of buttons that we can make in graphics and we're going to use the ellipse tool to set those up. So that's under your rectangle tool or you can just click L on your keyboard. And instead of clicking and dragging like we may have done in the past, I'm just going to click and it's going to give me this little window that allows me to type in the exact sizes that we need for our buttons. So to start with the largest button, our first size is 3.46 inches. And if yours is still set to points because we didn't change it into inches, you're going to have to type IN. It'll convert it to the pixels. And I'm going to put that in both places, 3.46 inches. And now I've got this circle, which has no stroke on it. So I'm going to give it a stroke so we can see it. And it's fine with a fill or a white fill, whatever it defaults to is fine. So now I've got one circle and I need to do another. So I'm going to go back to my ellipse tool by clicking L. I'm going to tap and I'm going to do 2.875. 2.875. And you can always refer to the classroom poster hanging up um, on the red wall that has the sizes. And I'm going to put this one inside. So now I've got two circles. But to help me know what I'm doing, I like to make this smaller one a dashed line. So I'm going to have my smaller circle selected. I'm going to go over here to my stroke panel. And if yours looks like this, make sure you go to your little cheeseburger, hit show options, and then I'm going to click dashed line. And now I've got a, my outside circle, which is my cut line, is nice and bold. And my inside circle, which is also called the live graphic area, is dashed. And that's going to help me remember to get rid of it later. And this is the large size. So I'm going to rubber band select, which is clicking outside the shape and dragging to get both of them. And I'm going to copy it to make a second one. So I'm going to hold option. I'm going to click here on the center dot, or you got to click on the path to get a spot to grab it to copy it. If you try to click in the inside, it's just going to do this. It's not going to let you get anything. So you got to get on like one of the lines. Or on that center dot. And I'm going to make sure they're nice and lined up. And you see I get these little pink lines that pop up to help me know that things are lined up. If you don't get those, I can help you find them. Sometimes they get turned off. So I've got a page set up for four large buttons. Now in reality, these large buttons aren't the most practical. They're nice and big so you can see, like you could put some really great design work on there, but they get caught on a lot of things. So they're not super practical, um, but you're always welcome to make them. You'll see that I have everything inside my blue lines, so nothing's gonna get cut off. And I have them in columns, and so that's going to make it a lot easier when we print them to cut them into strips and to cut them out in the circle uh, cutters, which are called dies. So this is a great example of setting up your file. But I have two other sizes I want to make. So I'm going to go over here to my artboard panel, and I'm going to give myself another artboard. And I'm going to give myself my guides. So I don't go too close to that edge and it because it will get cut off when I print. 
on the missing edges. And I'm going to do a new size. So I'm going to get my ellipse tool. We're going to do 2.625. Two point six two five. That's going to be my outer circle for my medium, and then for the inner circle, it's two point one two five. Two point one two five. Oop, and they're both invisible. So I'm going to get them both. Give them a stroke so we can see them. Take this baby, put it over here. Make it dashed. and I've got my medium size. Now, one of the things that's super important is that I don't grab these and change them because now they are no longer the right size to be made into buttons. Even though they're, I kept them in scale, I held shift down, you don't wanna start moving the size. You don't wanna scale them because that's gonna change it and that's not gonna work with the button. When you're designing for production, size is super important. So one of the things you can do if you accidentally zhush something or, or scale it and you're like, oh, I just messed up the size. You can delete them and start over. But you can also select the shape and then up here in your options bar, it's going to tell you the size of it. So I have it now at 2.8828, which is not the right size. So I'm just going to click right in there and put 2.625 and it's actually linked right now. So it made that on the other size as well. If it wasn't linked, it would have been, it would have turned into like a, like a squished circle. So I'm going to do that on this, on this one too. So this one's needs to be 2.125. I'm going to hit enter and it was linked. So it did both sides for me. So now we're back to where we need to be. Another great thing is like if you have a hard time kind of doing the, you don't get those pink lines, you're not sure if they're centered, you can rubber band select the two and use your alignment tools up here to center and center. So that's, a, let me kind of throw it off. So let's say I've got it, get them both. I'm gonna click center and center, and now it's been centered again. Um, if you haven't used the alignment tools before, there's always this little dude right here that you can change what it's centering it to. But when you want them to be just like aligned up with each other, you wanna keep it to selection. It's in the options bar here. It's also over here in its own panel, if you're ever looking for it. So now I've got my medium size. And I'm going to make some columns of those. Do that again. You want everything a little spaced out so you have room to cut it out. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but if you want to make it beautiful, you can. But you want them in columns or rows. You want them inside the blue margins and spaced out a little bit so they're not too squished. And then let's do our third size before I show you how to use them. So we'll do another artboard. You could, of course, put multiple sizes on one sheet, but you have to have all of the sizes um, in a column that are the same. So you wouldn't want to have tiny ones and then a big one because it'll make it awkward to cut out. Um, so for the third size, I'm going to tap. It's going to be 1.313. 1.313. I don't want that one to be dashed, so I'm going to uncheck that. And then the littlest one is 0.875. And again, you'll see these sizes in the presentation and on the poster in the classroom. So that's our tiniest size. And again, I'm just gonna line them up. So if you're not, you know, if you don't want a whole sheet of buttons, you definitely do not need to make them. But if they are super cute and you wanna donate some to the uh, bin, you can totally do that and we would love to have your buttons. So if you were going to have multiple sizes on one sheet, you would want it to look like something like that. Oop, I didn't put my margins down. Let me do that to make sure we're not going to get anything cut off. And this is how you do the sizes. I'm going to save this as a button template. So I have it and I don't ever have to do that again. I can have all my sizes all set up, throw it on the desktop. Button template already exists, huh? Let's put two. How good of one did I make last time? Who knows? Okay, so here's our button template. 
We've got all the different sizes. We have them in rows. But now we want to design some buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and make another artboard just for my sake. If you were going to do this um, to start making buttons, what I would recommend is go to File, Save As, give it a new name. Maybe you made this amazing kitten, and you're going to do some kitten buttons. Name it. If you do File, Save As, and do kitten buttons, you'll end up with two files. You'll still have your template, and then you'll have a new one that's just buttons, so you can delete what you don't want, um, start designing what you do want. But for demo purposes right now, we'll go ahead and go here. So let's say I have a beautiful design that I want to make into a button. I'm going to copy this over here. It's good to always keep at least one original with um, nothing in it, just so you don't have to, if you mess something up or you want to start over, you have that basic one there. Let me throw these dudes in here again. Okay, so we've got two circles for a reason. Buttons go into the back of the button. So this little area between the two circles is actually going to wrap around the side of the button and be tucked into the back. So we don't want to put anything in that area, which is called the bleed area. We don't want to put anything in the bleed area that we don't mind getting cut off. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go to File, Place, and look for something fun. Let's see, what do we got? I have a Bob Ross GIF, but that's not going to behave probably too great. Let's see, does it? What happens when we put this GIF in here? It should be just freeze framed. Look at that. All right, so we got Bob Ross. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And the first thing is I've got this square or rectangle that I want to put on a circle button. So if I just go like this, I mean, can you put that on a button? Sure, but why would you want to? That's sad. Okay. So what I'm going to do is make a clipping mask out of Bob. So I'm going to take this circle, make another copy of it, change the, so the color of it, and bring it to the front. And I'm going to think of this like a frame. So I'm going to frame Bob in this circle, and then I'm going to select both of them right click make clipping mask. So that's how you frame something and now he's exactly the size of the button. But did you see how I kept my base? Because if I wanted to make him smaller, for example, I still have those other circles. And what's nice about that is let's say I want him to be not cut off at all. So he's inside my live graphic and I could go like right to it if I wanted to, right? You want to keep whatever you don't want cut off here. But you never want to leave this white because it doesn't look nice. So I want to turn this inside of the circle to another color. So I'm just going to make it black. And that's going to look way better. The only thing you got to remember is, if I can find it now that it's black, my dashed lines. Let me make them a different color so you see them. I don't want those to print. So I'm going to go down to zero point font so that they disappear. And then I'm just going to line all these up. We'll go over here this time. So now this button is ready to go. If you wanted to put another graphic in, again, remember, never change the size of that. Let's go find something else to place. What do I got? What do I What do I got? Well, let's just do the school logo. There we go. So I'm going to get, oh, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get one of these guys. Okay. So I've got this EPS. I'm doing file place. I'm going to click and drag so it doesn't get too big. I'm going to resize our dog to get on the center. Again, I don't want him cut off, so I'm going to get him inside the dash line. I want to find a better background color, so I'm going to click this. Maybe I match it using the eyedropper tool to the red. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to center him a little bit better. I'm going to delete this so I don't see it. So I'm going to turn it down to zero. You could delete the whole thing, but sometimes you're like, you'll move something. You'll be like, oh, did I do that right? So you can always click on it, bring it back if you need to. 
and that's how you want to lay out a button. So you always want it inside the live graphic area, but you want some kind of background color or pattern or design to go to the extent of the outside. Don't forget about clipping masks. Those are super helpful. You can always double click inside your clip clipping mask to move things around in your frame. And if you need help with any of this, please let me know.